over the next few weeks, we're going to be talking about different perspectives on the origin of humanity, the earth, and just our universe in general. The first one we're going to be looking at today is young earth creationism, which is oftentimes represented and kind of started by Ken Ham. Ken Ham has gotten very popular over the recent years after the construction of this massive museum to show off the supposed reality of young earth creationism. In today's video, we're first going to be starting off with what is young earth creationism. We'll talk about the problems and just talk about Ken Ham and his theories in general. So first, what is young earth creationism? All this information about what is young earth creationism comes from Ken Ham as himself. I want to say that before I get started, this isn't kind of something I've ascribed to his theory. So first is that God created everything in six literal days and rested on the seventh. Now obviously this is tied to kind of the Genesis story with Adam and Eve, but I think it's a representation of all young earth creationist views, regardless of the culture or religion that you believe in. According to this theory, the earth is roughly 6,000 years old and evolution or evolutionary theory is an incorrect interpretation of the evidence at hand. Another very important part of this theory is that it suggests a global flood at one time did occur covering the entire earth and a repopulation event occurred with one single family. Let's now move on and talk about the problems of this theory. The first group of problems falls in the category of interpretation. First thing is that these ancient documents were written before science was even invented. They're oftentimes trying to convey a meaning, a message, or their interpretation of an event. We see this a lot with the gospel stories as well, which is a whole nother video, but it's important to remember that this isn't science that we're looking at when we look at the Bible. The second problem under this category is the fact that Ken Ham openly admits to using the biblical narrative as a lens for his scientific discoveries and interpretations. As any scientist would tell you, this isn't how science works. You don't start off with your conclusion and it's he's clearly, I mean, putting that lens on, people spend decades of their life trying to take that lens off so they can objectively look at science. Here he is actively putting the lens on of you know, religious belief of the biblical narrative to interpret the evidence. And that's not how it starts. You're supposed to follow the evidence and see where it takes you. And in this case, he's doing the exact opposite. Now, there are tons of scientific errors that I can mention. One first one is Adam and Eve. So there's no ed evidence that we are genetically related to two individuals. And this is recent evidence that has come out, you know, really within like the last year. And it's very important and very damaging to his theory. We are gen genetically related to a population of thousands, probably 10,000 people at least. Something that Ken Ham spends a lot of time refuting is radiocarbon dating. But radiocarbon dating at first, it was kind of sketchy, but radiocarbon dating has been around for a while. It has gotten better and better. Not to mention that there are various ways to use different elements to date things. It's not only carbon dating that exists. And now there are very accurate measures for trying to figure out how old fossils are and how old different rocks are. This is kind of an outdated argument. Techniques have been proved. And even if you don't think so, you have to ask yourself the question, you know, are these radiocarbon datings really billions of years off? Are they so off that the Earth is really 6,000 years, not, or 6,000 years old, not billions of years old? The next scientific problem with this theory is old light. Light from hundreds of millions of years, or hundreds of millions of light years away can be seen. And this light, however old it is, has taken multi-millions of years to reach Earth, suggesting that the universe itself is older than 6,000 years. If the Earth was only recently created, we should only be able to see light at a maximum of, according to this theory, 6,000 light years away. The next line of evidence that refutes his theory is Antarctic ice cores. There's roughly 800,000 layers of annual snowfall that have accumulated on Antarctica. This includes deposit deposits of ash from volcanic activity at known dates. So it really the idea here is that this whole thing gets flipped upside down. You need many, many thousands of ice layers each year, which don't suggest or don't match the rates at which we see today. 
and you also have to move around these dates of known volcan volcanic activity in these ice cores. And the ice cores kind of match the other carbon datings and things like that, but they don't match his theory for a young Earth. The next line of evidence is organization of the fossil record and sediment layers. So if you have a huge massive flood and he's claiming that the kind of the way we see things in the fossil record is due to the displacement of all these organisms and then their organization into sediment layers. And this organization kind of made the smallest organisms go to the bottom and the largest, more complex ones go to the top. The problem here is that according to Neil Shubin in his book, Our Inner Fish, he claims that not one time in recorded history have we found an organism that is misplaced. So is this really, is he claiming that the flood's organization levels of the sediment, of the sediment with organisms in it, is 100% accurate? Because there's never been an instance where, you know, a cat was found 2 billion years into the fossil record where it shouldn't be found. And I think that's a hard a hard hurdle for Ken Ham and his theory of young earth creationism. So at this point, you're probably thinking Ken Ham and his theory for young earth creationism doesn't look too good in this light. And unfortunately, you are correct. To recap, the first thing, the first problem we see is his interpretation. He starts with the biblical narrative as his lens for scientific discovery and analysis of scientific information. He then, and in his book many times, openly just refutes the evidence that is there. Old light is one that he kind of struggles with a lot, and he openly claims that he doesn't understand how old light could exist if the Earth is only 6,000 years old. It seems like a big dagger to his theory, but even in the face of something like that, he's more inclined to say, I'm sure there's an explanation for it, I'm still good with this theory. In a sense, I get this idea that he's starting with the conclusion, moving backwards and aligning evidence to fit his belief. Lastly, I want to end with a quote actually from Ken Ham from one of his books. He claims that this whole question about the origin of the universe, humanity, earth, and everything is not a question about science. It's a question about authority. And I think that this is just not how modern day science works. And it further illustrates the lens that he's put on himself to look at this. I mean, if you're looking at the scientific evidence and suggesting that this isn't about the science, rather it's about the authority of God. You're just not doing science correctly, and I don't know how you can kind of propose that as a solid, logical argument for your perspective. Thanks for watching this video. Next week, we're going to be looking at old earth creationism, which takes in kind of the opposite end of the spectrum as Ken Ham, and that's represented by Hugh Ross. So make sure to subscribe if you want to see that. Thanks for watching.